I first met Norman uh, when we were beginning the search for an architect for Hearst Tower. And there are so many architects in the world, they're so talented, they're all over. Uh, we decided arbitrarily that we were only going to look at Pritzker Prize winners. And so Norman's list of accomplishments particularly drew me, it was particularly the, I think it was the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank that he had done, which struck me as being the epitome of cool. And uh, I wanted to meet this fellow. So we went to Europe, uh, I, I'm trying to remember the year, but probably would have been sometime around the late 90s. And I went, to, uh, I went to London and was awed by the man and his, his, uh, his offices, the studio. I think he calls them his studio. It's, uh, it's a lot more than a studio. It's, it's pretty big on the banks of the, uh, of the Thames. And then we made a trip together to first to Frankfurt and then on to Berlin. And it was when we got to Berlin that I was just blown away by what Norman had conceived in this terribly contentious environment that is, that is, was the question of Berlin. They divided Berlin and the coming back together again. And uh, the Reichstag was, had a place in German history. It's, it's a old Beaux-Arts building from the 1880s, I want to say. And he put this beautiful glass dome on it. And uh, it was just struck me and left the graffiti, that the Russian army had left graffiti on the walls. And in order to remind people of the history of the Reichstag, he did that. Well, it struck me as being absolutely cool. It was superb. The way the light came down into the, into the, into the uh, meeting room of the, of the Congress etc. Then we went back to London and the icing was put on the cake when we went over to the British Museum, which was underway at the time. The reading room at the British Museum was being redone by Norman and putting a dome over it like he, Norman loves domes, so do I. And uh, up to then the British Museum had fallen on kind of rough days. It was hard to see the collection. He reorganized how people went there. They, the, the interior of the court was used as a parking lot and it was just not particularly good. And again, he demonstrated that this was the coolest guy in the Western world and uh, that really sealed it for me. We, we talked with any number of others of the Pritzker Prize winners, uh, but Norman seemed to fill the bill best for us. We had to do something unusual something that the city had never seen before, and something that was going to be iconic and go into the 21st century. Because as I pointed out to my colleagues, what, we're going to, what we were going to do here is going to have the family's name, the Hearst family's name on it for arguably 75 or 100 years, uh, at least as you look forward. So it had to be something good. I think the values of the Hearst Corporation are expressed magnificently this tower because the tower is forward-looking. We look back, we have a rich history going back to the development of the American West, but obviously the future of all of us is in the years to come and what's ahead of us. And so I think that this building anticipates both in its aesthetic and uh, in its design for working uh, the future. I think that, that art has been an important part of the life of the Hearst Corporation from the days of the founder. The kind of, th we had these thoughts and that uh, some of the things we talked about was, uh, was uh, when Norman began to get the idea of the, using the atrium in a very important way, you know, like the city square. Uh, when you're sitting in our atrium, it's like you're outdoors looking in instead of indoors looking out. And uh, as we began to deal with the question of how you get from the first floor to the third floor where the elevators were going to begin, we began to talk about all kinds of things. So when you, when you approach it, you have this marvelous illusion of this uh, th uh, three-unit escalator 
moving diagonally, skimming across the, across the waterfall. With, and the waterfall is coming straight down. And by the way, the waterfall is variable. And it varies by the time of the day. When you come in in the morning, it babbles rather loudly to greet you. Uh, in the middle of the day, I think they tone it down a little bit. And of course, above, we have lights so that at night, if you're going to use the space for entertaining, you can change the color of the waterfall. When you deal with Norman, uh, Norman became a friend. His staff became colleagues with all of us. Uh, it, was, it was, honest to God, it was a team. It was a client architect team. Everything that we did when we were building this, if there was a problem, it was, a, it was never a challenge. It was a challenge and it was a problem to be solved. It was not a problem. It was not an issue of architect versus client. And uh, it was a mutual problem. And we felt like a team all the way.